This is Optimal Relationships Daily, Episode 980, Why You Should Consider an Adventure Honeymoon, by Allie Cornish of everthrive.org. Hello, everybody. Greg Audino speaking, your host and narrator here on ORD. Really glad to have you here with me on this fine Sunday, if you are listening in real time. Today, I've got a post for all the young couples out there who are getting ready to take the next step. We're going to hear from Allie Cornish of Everthrive. She's got some words of wisdom about how to plan the honeymoon. And she's not talking about going to Sandals for a week. She's here to talk about a big adventure honeymoon with some stories from her own. So let's hear what she's got for us and start optimizing your life. Why You Should Consider an Adventure Honeymoon by Allie Cornish of everthrive.org We went on our honeymoon exactly four years ago. I've always wanted to share our experiences, but I hadn't been able to make the time until now. This article is written with the intention of both celebrating our marriage and sharing our somewhat unique experiences. For our honeymoon in 2016, Josh and I didn't choose an all-inclusive resort in the Caribbean. We decided not to spend 12 days on the beach listening to the ocean waves while receiving couples' massages. No. We didn't dine on crab legs and champagne at an Instagrammable five-star restaurant. Instead, we chose to rent a tiny camping van and circumnavigate the tiny Nordic country of Iceland. When we discussed our plans with friends prior to departing, we were met with blank stares and confusion. Camping around Iceland? For your honeymoon? Isn't it covered in ice? Yes, well, why on earth would we choose to honeymoon in a country that's known for ice? not to mention unforgiving volcanic landscape and an average June temperature of 48 Fahrenheit, especially right after the flurry that is planning and executing a wedding. By the way, it should be noted that Greenland is covered in ice. Iceland is actually much more green. Our reply? Why not? It was June 24, 2016, when we arrived in a foggy Reykjavik. It was raining just slightly and was a balmy 52 degrees Fahrenheit. After shuttling from the airport, we rented a snail vehicle, our little home as we slowly made our way around this special country. The van freed us from the obligation check-in and check-out times at hotels and farm stays. We could roam as late and as far as we pleased. Since we didn't pass many places to eat, we ate prepackaged, dehydrated meals we cooked over a small gas-powered stove. The 24-hour daylight afforded us unlimited opportunities to nurture our new marriage with fun experiences. Since it often took one to two hours to drive to each new destination, Josh and I had plenty of time to immerse ourselves in the beauty and majesty of Icelandic nature. We made room for spontaneous pullovers to check out vistas, Icelandic horses, hot springs, waterfalls, abandoned farmhouses, or to say hello to the sheep. They were quite literally everywhere. Even though we didn't choose to relax together at a tropical resort, we were still able to slow down and be present with one another. Camping each night was a deliberate choice that we made. Anyone can stay at a hotel and generally have a predictable experience every time. We slept under the Icelandic sky to bring us closer to nature and to have an amazing story to tell our children one day. As with any type of honeymoon, we collected many special memories on our journey. My mind holds specific snapshots frozen in time, moments that brought Josh and I even closer together, though sometimes our experiences didn't seem so great at the time. Admittedly, things didn't always go according to plan. For example, early in our journey, while we were searching for somewhere to camp, our van became stuck in a volcanic sand trap. We were really tired, hungry, we were starting to get short with each other, and then we got literally stuck in what we thought was an impossible situation. Miraculously, we were not only able to trial and error our way out of that hole, but we also endured another grueling hour of hunting for a camping spot. It was almost 11 p.m. when we were finally able to park and cook dinner. In hindsight, we are able to recall that evening with pride. We overcame several obstacles together. We saw how we both handled the stressful situation, and the result made us even more connected as a couple by increasing the respect we have for one another. Conquering tricky situations paves the way for potential good opportunities to become better people, and becoming better people together is the best gift of all. We're proud of our atypical honeymoon, but it wasn't easy. 
It took a considerable amount of planning, countless hours of driving on questionable roads, and some physically demanding hikes. And it was colder and more rainy than we had expected. At times, I really did wish I was at the beach nursing a pina colada and a good book. Sometimes, the best experiences come from working through hard times. Together, Josh and I built our experience from scratch. We certainly could have purchased an itinerary or tour experience from a travel company, but we chose to do the work ourselves in order to receive a greater reward. Married life is not a long period of relaxation and curated positive moments. Marriage is a complex road of interpersonal interactions and a mixture of all sorts of experiences. Marriage also takes plenty of work. With our honeymoon, Josh and I wanted to celebrate our marriage, to satisfy our longing for adventure and exploration, and to commemorate the beginning of our new forever chapter. We marked the start of our marriage with a honeymoon that more closely mirrored the zigzag, up-and-down, character-building aspects of life. Can't typical honeymoons accomplish the same goals? Of course typical honeymoons can also be filled with important, life-affirming experiences. For us, it felt right to choose the road less traveled. This decision led to the creation of certain parts of our personal identities, as well as our identity as a couple. You just listened to the post titled, Why You Should Consider an Adventure Honeymoon, by Allie Cornish of everthrive.org. Really good post by Allie here, such a wonderful reminder that Each couple is unique and that no couple should shy away from exploring that uniqueness and what it means to them. And what they've done in this honeymoon is set up a nice precedent for their marriage. You know, a lot of advice for building a morning routine revolves around doing something that reflects the challenges you want to overcome during the day. So if you, you know, if you want more relaxation, starting slow and easy is nice. Whereas if you want to push your limits that day, starting with a freezing shower is nice. And Allie and her husband did this, but on a much larger scale. As a couple that is aware of and committed to being themselves and working together to welcome hard times with open arms, this is the perfect honeymoon to set the tone for that. So take this chance to consider what you're trying to tackle, big or small, and how you can generate practice for yourself in your relationship or on your own. And that's going to do it for today, everyone. Thanks so much for joining me as usual. Really hope you enjoyed this one and that it gave you fiancés out there something to think about when it comes to honeymoon planning. Be sure to come on back tomorrow where we will continue the journey of better relationships with a post from Shayna Olmstead. I'll see you all there where your optimal life awaits.